life sounds like Hello, Livelies. I am so excited that you are here today because I have someone pretty awesome to, to introduce you to. And she approached me, and I didn't even think about this aspect of weight loss and feeling good in your body and feeling good in your skin, but it's, it's really cool, and there's, there's so much behind it. Allie Cudby is the CEO of Fab Foundations. She is known as America's number one bra coach. Allie is also the author of the best-selling book, Busted, The Fab Foundations, Guide to Bras That Fit, Flatter, and Feel Fantastic. Busted was on the Amazon bestseller for over a year and also is available in Spanish. Allie has an MBA in entrepreneurial management from the Wharton School of Business. All right, Allie, I'm so happy you're here. This is going to be so awesome. So before I let Allie talk, I want to talk to you guys a little bit really quickly on... Um, bra fitting so Allie obviously has that background and I I haven't truly struggled with this myself I wasn't I wasn't uh, I, nothing in that department let's just say and since you know I I did get a breast augmentation which I'm very open about um I feel like this hasn't been a big struggle for me but even as we have talked a little bit and actually my friend Crystal um does bra fittings too at a Victoria's Secret uh, I she has actually pointed out to me that I've been wearing the wrong size bra and I think initially some of you might be thinking why is this a big deal you know even if maybe you don't struggle with this like I have Allie has a lot of really awesome information on how this can really transform how you show up in the world which I'm a huge fan of I believe that you should not weight on the weight. Oh, when I get skinny, then I'll do X, Y, and Z. I'm all about showing up and feeling confident and feeling good now. Because when you do that, you subconsciously automatically make healthier decisions. So, so Allie, let's go from there. Let's talk about why this is important. Great. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm yeah. really happy to be here. Yeah. Um, what I hear from a lot of women is that they say, oh, I'm not going to invest in my bra because nobody can see it. And I actually couldn't disagree more. I think that what you wear under your clothes radiates to how you show up in the world, like you said. And if you think about it, this is the garment that you put next to some of the most intimate parts of your body. And it's a direct relation to sort of how, invest, how much you're investing in yourself. And um, you know what does it what does it say about a woman who says like I'm going to wear something that's old and tatty, um, and and that's how I am going to start my outfit every day. That's how I'm going to start my day. So mm -hmm. I actually think that everyone can see your underwear. Right, right. That's so true. Oh, that's so true. So I've worked through my relationship with money a lot, and one of the women that I follow who has kind of helped me with this, she talks about having holes in your underwear, holes in your socks and stuff. And how that's sending a message out to the world that I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough of new clothes. And like when I read that, I was like, how did she know? You know, like this is so bad. And it, it makes total sense is when we buy ourselves new underwear and bra, we, we, sh we really do show up differently. We feel differently about our bodies and about ourselves. So I'm like, I'm already totally sold, but I know you have some other information that I was like, well, this is interesting. Yeah. So what a lot of women, there have been a lot of reports on, you know, in magazines, on TV, all, all about sort of the bra makeover. And, um, you know, there's some really key things that women can do for themselves to know if their bra even fits them properly. Um, you know, there's a lot, you know, a lot of times you go into a store, somebody takes out a measuring tape and they tell you what your size is. And really, there are no standards for size in the lingerie industry. I mean, sizes change from brand to brand and even within a brand from bra to bra. So it's really helpful and actually very empowering for women to understand how a bra should actually fit their body instead of relying on that letter number combination. Right. Well, okay, tell them what you said about your workout regimen and how your bra size affects that. So there's actually been a study that shows that when a woman wears a bra, a fitness bra that doesn't 
fit properly, or when she's working out in a bra that doesn't fit properly, it has um, a negative effect on her willingness to continue working out. So women will actually stop working out because their bra doesn't fit. Because a lot of times, let's face it, it's uncomfortable. Right. I mean, I, I am on the opposite end of the spectrum as you. I'm very busty and um, actually had a breast reduction, which I am very open about. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you have that amount of um, weight moving on your body, it is it is really physically uncomfortable. And there are amazing fitness bras out there. You know, from a double A cup all the way to, you know, beyond an H cup. And so you know, there are so many more options out there than a lot of women even realize exist in the world. Wow. That makes total sense. And I'm sure that there are plenty of women who are like, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that all of you understand why I brought Ali on or why I love that Ali kind of approached me. And then I was like, ha, hallelujah, this is going to be so great for my people is there's value in this and I and we're going to go into how to tell if the bra that you're currently wearing is not fitting you properly so you can make the adjustments and know how to pick out a bra that's going to make you feel really good so you can subconsciously automatically make healthier decisions because when you feel fabulous you make fabulous choices I say that so many times to my clients is I don't want you feeling if you feel fat and frumpy you're going to make fat and frumpy choices but when you feel good, same weight at the, as these two scenarios, same weight. Take a little extra time on your hair and your makeup and maybe put some accessories on. They'll go a long way and get totally cheap ones and still look really fab. Um, when you do those things, you show up differently, including how you feel in your, in your bra and your underwear and what's underneath your clothes as well. Right. Well... Even physically, I mean, how, how you look, when you're wearing a bra that fits properly, it's going to hold you, um, it's going to hold your breasts sort of more inside your rib cage and higher. So you're actually going to look narrower and taller. And um, I don't know that many women that would prefer to look sort of wider and dumpier. So right. you know, that's sort of a good thing right there. Yeah. Um, w one of the key things that most women, like the one key fit, love that women encounter is that they wear their band too big mm -hmm. and that has a lot of negative effects for how it should how it feels on your body the, the band is like the foundation of your foundation and it should carry about 80 to 90 percent it should do like 80 to 90 percent of the work of holding your breasts up so if your band is loose or you know moving around on your body then that's going to be a fit issue right there that you're not going to be able to overcome. Right. So one of the things that I like to tell people just right off the bat is actually reach around and, you know, people can do this while they're actually listening to the video and put your fingers under your band and sort of pull away from your back. You should get immediate resistance against your fingers mm -hmm. and it should only come away from your back by like an inch or at most two inches. So if you can like pull your band really far back, and a lot of women can, that is immediately a sign that you're wearing the wrong size, and you can't overcome that. Um, so you really need to have a, a bra that fits that's going to be snug to your rib cage in order to give you the support you need. Right. Okay. Okay. Good. So reach around, ladies. Tug on it a little bit. Shouldn't be too loose. Okay. And then what's the other? What's another sign? So actually, so two more. Um, one is when you're when that band is too loose, it'll tend to ride up on your back over the course of the day. So a lot of women they find that their straps are falling off their shoulders at the time, so they're constantly tugging them back on, or they're tightening them down and to the point where it's making, you know, marks on their shoulders, it's really uncomfortable, it's digging in. Well, it's actually not the straps that are the issue. It's because that band is so big, it's riding up and the straps kind of have nowhere to go, so they fall off your shoulders. Right. And then the other thing about having a band that's too big is people, a lot of times they think, oh, I don't want to get a band that's too snug because then I'm going to get back fat. Um, I hear a lot about, you know, the horrors of back fat. And, of course, nobody wants that. But actually, the way to minimize back fat is to have a snugger band that's going to stay in place. When that band rides up, it actually pushes the skin on your back up and creates some of those lumps and bumps. Mm. So you can't always make them go away completely, but the way to minimize it is to have that nice, firm-fitting band that isn't going to go anywhere. Right, right. 
And you know what? I think a lot of women are like, oh, well, I'll just tighten my band. But you know what? I'll tell you that when my, my friend Crystal came here, you know, we were like getting ready and stuff like that. And I was walking around in my bra and she's so good at what she does. And she just is like, come here, let me see this. And I was like, what? And she's like, this bra does not fit you. And so I was like, what, really? And like, it was a, I know that it was really tight around and it was good. And, but there are, you know, all, all tatas are different sizes. And there are bras that are, are, you know, fit. The cup is designed for your certain figure. And, you know, she was talking to me about that and like how even on the sides that like, you know, you shouldn't be like hanging out on the sides or shouldn't be poking you. And, you know, it's, I obviously having a tighter band is good, but you know, and Allie and I were talking about this is you must invest in yourself. It says a lot about, you know what it's saying to the world? It's saying to the world, I deserve to feel good in my clothes. And I think that everyone should, should, should really educate themselves on this topic, which Allie has some really great resources, which we're going to talk about in a minute, but you deserve to feel good. And even if you are on a weight loss journey, a very common um, response is, oh, well, I'm going to lose weight anyway, so I'll just wait. But you know what I say to my clients about that? Because they say the same thing when it comes to just clothes in general. Like, oh, well, I don't want to buy new clothes. Because I'm like, okay, we need to make you feel fabulous. And if all your clothes are too small or too big, it's going to be really hard for you to feel fabulous. You need to invest some money into this. And they say, you know, well, I'm going to lose weight. So, I'm, you know, what's gonna, and it's like, it's now. It's not waiting. We need to do this now. You can either get them tailored or you can donate them. You know, you can find something. This is a really good problem to have to buy new clothes because you've lost weight. And it's going to actually encourage you and help you to lose weight if you just make investments like these now. Right. Absolutely. I mean, not to mention how important it is to feel comfortable and feel good in your clothes. And when it comes to your bra, I hear from so many women that the first thing they do when they get in their car after work is rip their bra off because it's so miserably uncomfortable. And you know, they perfected the art of taking their bra off under their clothes in their car. And actually, when you wear a bra that fits, fits properly, it's comfortable. Right. So you wear it longer, you're not going to have that feeling anymore. So it just has so many um, benefits when there are so many benefits to wearing a bra that fits. Right, right. That's totally true. And so do you kind of, do you have any tips around sports bras specifically? Um, or does any of, any, any content on your site or anything go into that at all? Yeah, so, um, so sports bras really, um, they follow a lot of the same rules as regular bras. Mm -hmm. um, and you, so when you know how to find a bra that fits, you'll know how to find a sports bra that fits. But one of the really cool things or interesting things about sports bras is you know, there's two different kinds. There's the kind that is called the compression kind, and then there's the encapsulation kind. And the compression kind is the one that sort of, a lot of times it pulls over your head almost like a little crop top, and there's one area that both of your breasts kind of go into. And um, the other kind is built like a bra with two distinct cups. Yeah. You always end up gesturing like this while I'm talking about bras. <laughs> That's okay. Hazards of the trade. <laughs> um, so... If you are doing really low impact exercise, those and, and particularly if you're smaller busted, those compression bras are great. But when you're running, and especially if you are um, like a C cup and above, you really want to look for an encapsulation style sports bra because there have been other studies that actually track the movement of the breasts when you're doing more high impact exercise mm -hmm. and the breasts move independently. So it can actually pull on, on the tissue a little bit. Oh. If you um, do high, high impact exercise or running in one of those like um, compression style bras. So women who have um, more bust will want to look for an encapsulation style. Hmm. That's really good to know. I know. And then even when my, my friend Crystal was like telling me my cup size, I'm like, what? there's no way I'm that size. And she's like, yeah, you are. You really are. And I was like, whoa, that, that doesn't sound right. But she's like, she's like, that's what a lot of women say. A lot of women won't believe that they're a certain cup size. Um, and, and maybe there's even some shame around that. Do you think? From Absolutely. I mean, women, women want to be, they want 
they have an idea of what these cup sizes mean. Right. And you know, they a lot of times they think that, oh my God, if I'm a D or a double D, that must mean that I'm incredibly busty and that must mean something about my sexuality. I mean, they have all of these thoughts in their heads about what it means. And the reality is it doesn't mean anything because first of all, um, your cup size is actually tied to your band size. Mm-hmm. So the cup, a, a double D cup on a 32 band is going to be a completely different size than on a 40 band, which a lot of women don't know. They think a double D is a double D is a double D. And actually that band and cup are, are correlated. Mm-hmm. So, um, so as your band goes down, your cup is going to go up. Um, and so it, it's it's actually, it, it sounds confusing, but once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. Right. Um, and, and I go into a lot of detail into this in the book so that people really know how to find their their right bra for their body. Right. Okay. So yeah, let's let's talk about that. So Allie has a really awesome book and also a quiz, quiz, yes. love quizzes, um, on how to tell if you're wearing the wrong size bra. Right. Yeah. So if you go to AllieCudby.com, that's my name. Um, so it's A L I C U D like dog, B like boy, Y dot com. Um, you can take the quiz and it'll go through all of the different fit factors so you can sort of check out what's working for you and what you might want to change when it comes to your bra. And you can also um, take a look at the first chapter of the book for free. So, nice. um, so you know, you can sort of try before you buy. Right. Um, but we can also give you a link to Amazon if you are just where yeah. to go. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we'll put the link to Allie's book and, and her website and that quiz and stuff below this video because this is important, you know, and, and I, I feel kind of badly that I didn't think about this. But now that I have, you know, it's an issue. And I, I don't know, I just start, like, things keep going for me when I think of, because we talk about, like, limiting beliefs and stuff and weight loss and how those are holding you back from really making progress. I, I And now that what you brought up about being busty is, I wonder if women who are more busty do have a hard time losing weight because maybe somewhere in their mind they think that there's some sort of sexual, you know, re- relationship or connection there that if they lose weight and maybe not in their breasts where, you know, that's really exploited, you know, in our media and stuff like that, that that could be a fear of theirs, right. like getting arrogant attention from men, which could lead to maybe getting hurt or something like that. And maybe that, yeah. It's just all kind of come into my head now. I don't even... Right. Well, I mean, in my experience, before I found bras that fit, I really went from store to store trying to find bras. And I I hated bra shopping. I I hated it so much, I pretty much cried every time I went because I felt like every there was nothing in my size. I could not find anything in my size because I didn't know about these brands that went beyond double D. Mm. And... um. So every time I went bra shopping and I tried on a bra that didn't fit, I kept feeling like it was saying that I didn't fit. And I really internalized that story. And that's very common for women, but not just busty women. I mean, there there are a lot of women who are very petite and they end up going bra shopping. And, and when I say petite, I mean small cup. Um, they go bra shopping and nothing in the department store fits them either. And they're told to go to the junior section. And that's really debilitating for women. I mean, that, that doesn't make you feel feminine. That doesn't make you feel like you fit either. And so it's, it's actually on, you know, a lot of women get some message at some point in their life that there's something wrong with them because of their breasts in some way, shape or form. Right. And, and that has a direct implication for how they feel about brush up. Right. Oh, that's so true. Hand on heart. I'm enough. I'm enough. I'm enough. I tell my clients that all the time is when they're just feeling like, and I could see an experience like that being so just heartbreaking and feeling like, oh, I'm not enough. I'm not what the standard is, you know, on both sides of the spectrum. Totally. And so right. hmm, good stuff. I love talking about this, Allie. So awesome. Okay. So her, all of the links are below. Um, check out her stuff. Obviously this is, this is deeper than just a bra. Come on, like, it's so much deeper than that. It's really about you as a person and, like I said at the beginning, showing up who you truly are and who you want to represent in this world, you know? So anything else, Allie? 
No, that really encapsulates it. I mean, it is it, it is a lot more than just a bra, and it is all about showing up. So I'm so thrilled to be able to be here and share that message with your audience. Thank you yeah. so much for having me. You're welcome. All right, ladies, links are below. Check her out and invest in yourself. You're totally worth it, and it'll make a big difference. All right, bye. <laughs>